let's do some news. Hi, everybody. My name is Mike B, aka Phony. Today's date. Today's date. September 16th, 2022. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. What? What? One inch of glazer can melt in two days. And I what? I can't I can't change my hairstyle in two days? Come on. Glacier, that's a big thing. This is a small thing. Cheese. Cheese. Time is three. I'll let you figure out the rest. <laughs> 17 is for the Europeans since six months ago. Ah, there's always somebody. There's always somebody. Cheese. Well, um, uh, it was a pretty lightweight news. It was a pretty lightweight news up until uh, like about six hours ago. <laughs> when it suddenly <laughs> was not a lightweight news day. Uh, some of you guys may have heard, but if you haven't, there's a little company called EVGA, which a lot of people are pretty much considered to be synonymous with NVIDIA um, because they've been in part, they've been partnerships in a partnership for like decades uh, announced today that they are no longer going to be supporting NVIDIA uh, related products or cards. They're not going to be manufacturing them, selling them, any of that stuff starting well, basically now, because they're not going to do anything with the next uh, edition, uh, or the next versions, and they're not going to be um, um, uh, doing it. I think, I think any testing they did, they're going to submit, and that's pretty much the gist. That's pretty much it. So the only note that we have officially on this, official, I'm not saying that all the other news is fake. I'm just saying the only official word that we have on this from the company is a forum post from a product manager that says, you may have heard the news regarding the next generation products from EVGA. Please see below for a message on future products and support. EVGA will not carry the next generation graphics cards. EVGA will continue to support the existing current generation uh, products. Uh, and EVGA will continue to provide current generation products. So what? Who died? What? Crazy out of left field, it seems. It does seem like that. So they already notified, excuse me, they notified uh, NVIDIA in April of this year. So NVIDIA's already had a, had a heads up on this whole thing. Uh, let's say EVGA is the most one I hear about NVIDIA, about NVIDIA cards. Yeah, exactly. I, like I said, they're, they're, they're like synonymous with NVIDIA because they've been in partnership for so long. Uh, but this story was actually broke by Gamers Nexus, uh, who we've talked about in the past related to other uh, controversies that they've somehow been able to like channel fire their way into. Um, but yeah, he has uh, pretty good coverage talking about this is a good solid 30 minute video where he goes over some of the details from the, from the, uh, um, from the interview that he did with the CEO. Uh, the CEO seems pretty hell-bent on basically just saying like, hey man, we don't want anything to do with NVIDIA because they treat us like shit, both, uh, I guess, both personally and financially, business-wise. Uh, he shows some examples here. Uh, perfect example right here. Look at this. <laughs> wow. A uh, great example that GamersX puts up is this here, showing that what we all know is that NVIDIA does uh, do their own DTC, direct-to-consumer selling, uh, by, by making their own cards. So they're able to undercut the competition, which are people or companies that license through them so they could make the cards for NVIDIA and sell them. Well, they're getting undercut by their own fucking license or. Licensee? License or. Um, is EVG a Chinese company? Yeah, no, it's a US company. Uh, although they're keeping some stock for what it sounds like is for warranty replacements. Yes, that's right. That's something else that they said they're going to do. They're going to be keeping some, uh, but they're just going to cease all manufacture of new video cards. Um, and they're entertaining the idea of, uh, of an Intel or AMD partnership, but right now they don't have anything, uh, solid or in the books. Uh, but they firmly believe that this is the fault of NVIDIA for basically shit like this. Now, uh, this is something that, this is something that, uh, definitely feels like nvidia is doing it to themselves because we know that over the past few years with the cryptocurrency boom that nvidia has been doing a lot of focusing on manufacturing for cards that are uh of the higher end scale instead of instead of making cards that are available for everybody right like you know a lot of like lower end cards like the 70s or the 60s or something or the 50s right so instead of doing those they focus primarily on getting some of the higher end cards out because they know that crypto bros are going to be spending top dollar for these things and now what's going on? Well, now, now you can go and buy, well, you could buy a video card, a high-end video card for less than you could buy a brand new video card, uh, a brand new lesser powered video card. Um, say like they got the, it's in other words, EVGA is going under. No, 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 I don't think that's the case at all. I don't think that's the case at all. Uh, and, and so just, if you guys don't know, it, it, 
EVGA does a lot more than just video cards. They're known for video cards and video cards is like 80% of their business of their uh, revenue, but it's absolutely not 80% of their profit. Uh, I think in the video, it's also noted that uh, that the amount of profit and stuff that they pull from it uh, is like, yeah, it's like zero. So being able to drop uh, NVIDIA as a product or as, as, a, um, uh, as a department or whatever of their company probably ends up freeing up resources. They say they're not planning on letting anybody else go. They're not planning on doing uh, basically any of this stuff. Here's, again, uh, uh, Gamers Exodus does a pretty good job of going over showing some of the um, uh, some of the overall losses, like on each on individual cards, uh, showing how many how much losses that they suffer, you know, for uh, for these sales. <clears throat> uh, let's see, their other major segment is power supplies, and they are not anything special. You know, I've I've heard I've heard mixed things. I've heard mixed things. I think this is definitely going to be a case of well, your mileage may vary because I've I'm reading. I feel like what I've read is heavily leaning towards. EVGA was the best, one of the best manufacturers for uh, video cards because their customer service was so good. Uh, and I'm seeing that from like Carnage. I'm seeing that from like a, just a bunch of randoms, right? Like who cares about the influencers, right? Um, and uh, so it looks like, it looks like EVGA is, or the NVIDIA is suffering a loss here. Uh, not necessarily uh, uh, financially or anything because I'm sure they'll still find somewhere to sell the cards. Um, but actually on that note, uh, or not, because people are going to be buying used, you know, 3090 TIs for, you know, probably $5 after today's, uh, or after this recent, uh, Ethereum merge, which could talk a little bit about this because it is kind of related. Uh, their PSUs are my go-to. Yeah. I actually think I have an EVGA PSU in here too. Uh, in, in one of my machines, I know for a fact I do, uh, and some GPUs as well. Yes. Other products, not so much. I like all my EVGA products. Oh, as a matter of fact, I have an EVGA motherboard too. That's still alive. <laughs> I like all the EVGA products, uh, PSU, GPU, and the likes. Uh, if I can get EVGA, I got it. Yeah, you know, I just, I just never, uh, I just never looked at them as being like so separate from from Nvidia because I always just went to, I just, you know, I saw EV, EVGA. It's like, yeah, trust your manufacturer of Nvidia cards, and so that was pretty much it. Trusted manufacturer of basically anything. I've, I've rarely heard anything negative about EVGA. Uh, they're looking for the turret he made Luna. <laughs> um so so like i said it's a 30 minute video i went through and watched the majority of it get, got some notes here but what it really looks like here is uh is that uh, nvidia has managed to and i'm actually gonna quote myself because i put this in discord uh so they managed to insulate themselves from their own overproduction of high-end cards they're losing a huge partner in the process um and frankly they may not even care as long as they continue to doing direct uh, direct to consumer there's uh, profits they could make um so, so this is where, this is where like, you know, NVIDIA is kind of in a weird pickle with all this. Uh, NVIDIA, NVIDIA is, you know, biggest manufacturer of Bitcoin or Bitcoin, just cryptocurrency mining hardware, right? Essentially. Uh, and as of recently, uh, and crypto mining is basically dead. So here's a tweet here. This was shared by Jordan, uh, but it says GPU mining is dead less than 24 hours after the merge. Uh, here are the three largest GPU changes: the current daily profitability, 39 GPU, and six US cents per kilowatt hour. So um, just to try to simplify this a little bit, but basically what what they're talking about is if you buy a card, what kind of profit can you turn on a card based off of a certain uh, a price per kilowatt hour? Uh, if you if it spent this if it spends all of its time just computing cryptocurrency bullshit, uh, and so they're showing that well, crypto mining is basically dead, especially with Ethereum and some other things. Um, and so what's going to happen now is you're going to see like a flood of I mean, a flood of Nvidia cards, uh, <laughs> high-end Nvidia cards actually uh, that may be worth picking up. I know that there's you know it's like you might be a little bit worried about about the card running at a hundred percent for you know twenty four seven for any period of time, but if you get a good enough deal, it might be worth it to go anyways. Um, uh, there's there's just uh. uh it's just bad timing for NVIDIA, really, <laughs> because they're losing one of their biggest manufacturers. They are partners. Um, uh, they're losing their market because, let's be real, their market has been cryptocurrency mining uh, for the past couple of years, not necessarily consumer level stuff. Um, Two dollars for a TI. Yeah, I went out of people pick up extra cards just to have them. Sure. Yeah. Um, uh, most minor cards are undervolted and, un and underclocked, so often enough they are less stressed. Uh, EVG aren't selling. Aren't selling. 
Um, 3090 Ti, yeah, man, pick yourself up a 3090 Ti for like, you know, probably a few hundred bucks used. Uh, I mean, we'll see what happens. This will be a, but it's going to be a lot of cards hitting the market. I mean, think of all those warehouses and shit that we saw videos of. We talked about them here on the news, uh, showing like, oh, here's where all of your video cards are, right? It's like you walk into like some building in the middle of fucking Arizona desert or something like that. And all you see is just like a ton of arrays of cards just basically work and just um and that's and that's where all the cards went you couldn't get a fucking card forever and now things have eased up a little bit now you can't really mine you basically can't mine with them anymore at least on, on some of the anything that's profitable um the big farms in iceland these days well they're they're dead now <laughs> they're effectively dead like and there's a lot of like weird takes on this stuff it's like oh well all those cards are still going to be oh, god damn it some of these fucking takes i got to put it up because it's so fucking stupid um if a hey, theory finally made a swap that's right after uh after two years delay uh and so yeah like this one this one i, I had to pull this one almost every gpu miner in the world switched to mining another chain uh ethw or uh or started playing video games no energy saved now that i seen a lot of takes like this and it just makes me wonder, it's like, are you guys like not even thinking like even close to like fourth dimensionally or something or what? Like all of those cards that are running basically like red lines or undervolted red lines um, in those warehouses are not suddenly being used 24 seven in people's gaming rigs. Like we're absolutely saving a fuck ton of power, like 99 percent of power on this shit. Um, I can see the pain in my face about how stupid these people are. Dude, it's so dumb. It's so fucking dumb. <laughs> and in the comments, man, there's so much more of the comments too. And it's just like, what are you guys even talking about? Crypto bros on Copium. This is like the opposite. This is the people that like, they, they feel like, uh, like it's not, and maybe not this person specifically, but this feels like it's like the anti-crypto bro where it's like the only good crypto bro is a dead crypto bro. Like no amount of like changing or like saving or of power or whatever will work. It will make me happy. I have to find something to fucking bitch about on, uh, on Twitter. <laughs> I have to be mad. Outrage. It's my currency. It's all I got. It's just what these guys fucking do, man. Uh, I just finished bowling and we're shitting on brainlet takes today. Hell yeah. Uh, happy Friday, Mike. Hey, it's going. It's going. We're doing news. So see, people just want to seem smart when they're uh, full of smoking, uh, uh, full on just smoking the fumes from the crypto mines. Idiots online. I can't believe it. I know. So yeah, this is like really terrible timing, I think, for NVIDIA. Um, actually, I wonder what time is it? Let's see, the markets are closed now. Let's see, NVIDIA stock. Probably nothing happened in NVIDIA stock um, today. Yeah, basically nothing happened today. Um, let me see. There, well, <laughs> there, nothing happened today. But overall, they're just not doing super. Um, yeah, it's do 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 do. Yeah, it looks like people knew about some of this. Is April. Oh, how funny! That's when they let. That's when the uh, VGA let them know that uh, that they're not going to be uh, supporting the cards anymore. Uh, do 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 do. They're going out for a while. Probably has something to do with the fact that nobody's buying cards anymore because the market's saturated with uh, high-end cards and cryptocurrency miners and all that shit. But you know what? I'm not going to be upset. Fuck them. Um, uh, no energy say. Let me tell you something. As someone who built miners, a, car, uh, a card running at 100% utilization when electricity go up several hundred dollars. Who says? Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, no. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. I thought. I, I, <laughs> yeah. In response to this guy? Absolutely. It's fucking stupid. Smooth brain shit, man. Like, Really? Like, really? There's, like, he was the only person. He was the only person. I couldn't believe how many people were, like, saying this. Now people were agreeing. It's like, do you not, not understand how many cards were being used to mine 24 fucking 7? <laughs> like, <laughs> there's no way we're going to match that amount of power now. The fuck? It, it's dead. Crypto mining is dead. I'm sure eventually they might find something else that they can mine or something. But it's going to be with a different card. It's not going to be with whatever cards they have laying around. They're going to, want to go for whatever the best is, the most power uh, efficient, uh, you know, whatever. Because any card that they pick up, they can just turn around and make a profit on once they start mining shit. That's the goal anyways. They're going to turn around. Everybody's going to turn around and sell all these used cards um, in order to try to recoup some of their losses, period. That's all. That's what's going to happen. Like, it's just they're going to sell them and then they're going to get out of this market uh, not all of them, but a good fucking chunk of them. A good fucking chunk of them. Uh, and then they're going to... Uh, and then the next coin that comes around where, you know, if it's worth mining like this, then they'll probably... Uh, you'll go pick up a bunch of cards and do it again. But honestly, I, th I think that if uh, if Ethereum now not requiring this uh, uh, proof of work, right? Proof of work uh, 
where they have to use all these computing cycles in order to make it valid um, would probably set a standard for other coins because why does some, but why would we want it? Because the Ethereum is, is such a huge coin to begin with, right? Why would we want to go back to the old way of having to build these huge mining farms and all that shit uh, and have to like hassle with trying to find cards and building these bots in order to buy all the cards for the consumers could buy them and all that shit. Why would we repeat the same thing again? I understand history repeats itself, but a lot of times we end up learning at least to some degree, don't do that one thing that could also result in like a million other steps that you'd have to follow and instead build something that works like this out the, the gate. Now, I'm not an engineer, so I don't know how easy that is. I'm a content guy. I just say, make it look like this. <laughs> but you see, um, if I was writing nine cards, 2013, my electric bill is over $1,000. Normally it was around 150. Uh, they should uh, use them for SETI. Yeah, start folding, man. Uh, it's about time anyway. The market is heavily oversaturated and that caused massive inflation. Just waiting for the Shiba coin, making me a millionaire. No, no. Still holding on to that doge, man. I know you're an engineer with one E. I know. Uh, <laughs> you gotta slow down and type it, man. <laughs> I'm an engineer. <laughs> engineer. Ah, there we go. Good save. Good save. Engineer. That's a good one. Mm. Doge is down in the gutter, but it's also been just chilling in the gutter. Strangely, I don't understand why it's doing that. It went down and then it just kind of sat there, which means it could make a comeback. It could happen. Could make a comeback. I, it could make a comeback. You don't know. You don't know. <sighs> list your engineering degree, everybody. List your engineering. That's right. Yeah. Hole. That's right. Diamond hands, bitches. Come on. No paper hand, bitches, in here. Ha. Come on. Bottom dip, bottom dip. Oh, yeah, but you have uh wait, wait, but I have a piece of paper from the University of Kentucky that says I'm one. Man, I would just I would just leave the Kentucky part out. <laughs> Kinds, I'm just fucking kidding, dude. I know you're an engineer. I know. I know. Uh, <laughs> uh is that why Gubbs has trouble with maps? Because he's oh guns, guns. Y'all can't I'm out. what no one can spell they <laughs> Don't worry, it's not just you guns, it's everybody. Genshin Impact Transition is making an an a game that is anime styled. Is getting an anime styled anime. What? What? <laughs> so I know a lot of you guys play this. I know a lot of you guys still play this. Uh, except for Red War Machine, he does not play this. But I know that some of you guys still play this. <laughs> uh, it is it is a, still a massive fucking title. Uh, I'm actually surprised it took this long just to get uh, a a full length or, or get any kind of like uh, motion animation thing um, uh, going for these guys. Because, I mean, I, I mean, it's a shoe-in uh, type of IP, and it's such a huge game. Uh, it's brought to you by, um, or it's going to be uh, done by Uf Ufo Table, who also brought, brought uh, you guys. I say you guys, not us, because I don't watch them. But uh, Demon Slayer, Fate Zero, and uh, I forgot the last one. Uh, Fate Stay Night. So, so three. Oh, but, I mean, there's a lot more than that. That's just a few of the more popular ones. Um, do you play a source material is probably why? Maybe. Maybe, uh, I'll push the sales some more. With the art, it, it was it's generated. Uh huh. Uh huh. Is that your weeb enough to have seen those? Yeah, there you go. So, so yeah, it's uh, uh I mean, it's gonna look like an anime to all of us uh, normies. It's gonna, yeah, it looks like anime. <laughs> so for us, it's kind of cool, man. You guys are gonna get a new cartoon off of your uh, out of your game. Hopefully, it lives up to the hype because most things that are based off most cartoons or animations or movies that are based off of games are typically not that good. So, you know, I know someone's gonna say Arcane, but Arcane, do it. I fucking dare you. Okay, nobody. Okay. <laughs> oh, but Arcane! <laughs> Oh, RK was a shit. See, see, see. <laughs> They're also making a trading card game, both physical and digital, that is coming out soon. There you go. Nice. Um, 
Yeah, it's UFO tables, so they're not uh, and they're not actually fucked up once. So they're not fucked up once yet. Yeah, there you go. They got a track record, one hundred percent. Arcane was amazing. I'll fight anyone that doesn't like it. But the Mega Man show, yeah, man, Mega Man show. <laughs> <laughs> the new cyberpunk edge runner was amazing oh man i thought you guys was making up words <laughs> i thought you guys was making shit up. what is cyberpunk edge runner hold on i thought you guys was making that up <laughs> you guys just took two words and put them together because it sounded good <laughs> uh oh this is recent four hours ago this is recent this is a few days ago but warning what some scenes what it say probably flashing or something like that and see ooh trigger yeah, hey, look at that. Looks good. Looks good. No, seriously, it does. I mean, yeah, it looks like it looks pretty fun. It's like it's colorful. <laughs> hey, man, I've seen I've seen Redline. All right, I'm hip. All right, I've seen Redline. What? What? I know what I'm, I know what I'm talking about. I know a good anime when I see one. She. The Mario Brothers movie was great. It was. <laughs> Dennis Hopper, man. Have best Palser. <laughs> uh, it's like a hundred percent. What is that? It's literally got perfect reviews. Wait, what? What? Which one? Which which show? Which one? So I can say it sucks. Uh, oh, Cyberpunk. Okay, it sucks. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I have no opinion of, of any of these things. I just know you guys like them, and I know it makes money for games industry. So you know, I'm down for it. I'm down for it. I'm down for it. If it makes money, it creates jobs in the games industry fields, then you know what? That's good. That's good. Grab the Disney Cox clip for Edge Runner. <clears throat> I have that right here. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, get an impact. Get a new anime. UFO table. UFO table. Edge Runner clip on artistic design. Oh man, I'm going to watch that right now. We got news to do. Well, okay, fine. What is it? It's a, it's a long, it's a short news. So let's see. What is it? What is she saying? Oh. Character design for Rebecca. And they were like, she's a lowly. Lowlies don't exist in Night City. It doesn't fit the Cyberpunk 2077 aesthetic. But Trigger was like, no, the lowly must stay. And <laughs> Japan knows what Japan place. likes. Some dude showed up to the board meeting. Oh, yeah. It was Giancarlo Esposito in his suit. And he was like, no. Um, she cool must stay. Awesome. Cool can point. someone? First episode where you know his mom dies. Can someone make me an image of Giancarlo Esposito that says the lolly really must stay? What he wants. Five minutes later. <laughs> <laughs> this one is exactly what I was talking about. All right, I don't get it. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. <laughs> Huh? Yeah. Uh, sorry. I, <laughs> but hey, man, it's good. It's good. It was me. Yep. Uh, uh, but you know what I do get? You know what I do get? Is there a theme song here? What could that be? What could that be? What, what could that be? Right, I think. Damn, there we go. Damn it, fucking banner. Golden Eye. Um, <laughs> the future of esports. Black Golden Eye. Dang. See, now I say I, I, I intentionally went from like anime to Golden Eye because I knew there'd be conflict there. I knew there'd be conflict there. <laughs> so, Golden Eye 007, the classic, the classic, classic, classic. Controller plays first person shooter. Um, them ass controls on the 64. Banning odd job. Yeah. Golden eye. So it is a uh it is official. They are doing a 4K remaster. Then it's coming to both uh, uh Xbox Game Pass, yay, uh, and also to Nintendo Switch. Now uh it does say it coming to the Xbox Game Pass, but something should be should be noted is that they have exclusivity of multiplayer to uh to nintendo so as you see they're they're bragging about it here they're saying there you go oh, now with online play uh you pick that up for the nostalgia now keep in mind the original n64 version did not have online play it had split screen quad screen 
Uh, so <clears throat> you can still play it on Xbox Game Pass the same way that you would back in the day. Uh, mo modders will solve the PC multiplayer. Ooh, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. And you know, and you know, Nintendo had to fight for that. They had to, they had to do something in order to get that, um, uh, that uh, exclusivity for the multiplayer because, I mean, because Nintendo's netcode versus Xbox's get netcode. I'm pretty sure I know which one they'd probably want to write for. <laughs> so yeah, they're certainly inconveniencing their uh, their devs or the devs for this uh, by by forcing this, but they probably ended up paying for it in some. Um, so they had a veto power is probably the reason they let it happen. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, obviously going to uh, going to uh, Xbox Game Pass is a great way to get that game out to as many people as possible, but you don't want to give it the best part, which is multiplayer, which is why everyone played it anyways. Um, and so they put that on uh, on here. So and like, yeah, I, it's such a weird thing. You know what? It's so weird that I actually misunderstood the controversy at first because uh, I thought that the uh, the 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 um, uh, netcode exclusivity the uh, uh the online exclusivity was for uh for xbox because that would make sense because that would make sense why would we have <laughs> why would nintendo get online <laughs> over xbox right and so i i actually was looking for ways to disprove that and i found this tweet and i was like but wait if nintendo is saying they have online then they must have online so what are these guys talking about? And then I saw that Xbox is a have online. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, I just wasn't expecting that. Um, so we had Rose quad, quad play the shit out of that killing each other. The, the mode options were great. I wonder if they thought of this because of the Agent 64 spies ever die on Steam. Uh, the Nintendo, they don't make sense. Yeah, sometimes they don't. Um, so this is, uh, you know, we were talking about this in Discord and somebody brought up that there is actually uh, already exists a Far Cry 5 map that somebody spent 1400 hours creating um, that was technically taken down sh for a period of time, uh, but it was quickly remedied and put back up because because it, it shared the name. I think it was called GoldenEye or something like that. So the maps, the map set or collection or whatever is actually called Golden Cry now and includes a full uh, remake of yes, it's all levels um, in uh, in Far Cry 5. So so if you have Far Cry, you could go and play it yourself, and you could see. I mean, what I've read about this. I mean, if you even look at it, uh, is that the amount of detail that this person this person put into this uh, into these maps is staggering. So it might be one of those like um, one of those things you go in, you play it, and you're just like, this is exactly how I remember it because you don't really remember what the game looked like, you know. Um, Golden Eye Source. I guess you could also go Golden Eye Source too, but just don't don't talk about it out loud because you'll get because you know Nintendo will come down on that shit. But anyways, yeah. So these guys were DMCA a long time ago, um, uh, and you know who knows if that had anything to do with uh, uh, with this. Uh, not not even that long ago, like last year. Uh, if it had anything to do with the development of a remaster, just to kind of clear up any potential like confusion, which is which is something that happens often, right? Like they'll go after things ahead of time in order to um uh in order to basically eliminate any competition or any confusion with the brand uh prior to making any announcements or anything it's been rumored for years better remember but i do remember selling one copy for 50 euros to some insane collector that doesn't sound like that much i feel like 50 50 euros not bad if, if you really if you if, did it come with the box like full on with the box and everything anyway so so yeah, um, and then also, also this week, um, <laughs> this is actually one of my favorite stories today. So I mean, I'm not, I'm not for well, anyway. So <clears throat> just the game that averages around 15 euros at the time. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah, paid a pretty penny for that. Um, so. Some years ago, I used to work for a company called Zam, and um, Zam ended up. Uh, Aunt Zam was owned by another company called Tencent, and <clears throat> after a certain amount of time of uh, of uh, cruising and you know, probably not making enough money, um, uh, Z Tencent decided that it was time to go ahead and clear things out. Now we had some issues with some some members of management kind of fucking things up. Um, so we did have some problems that definitely, uh, helped uh, draw some attention to us <laughs> that we didn't necessarily want, but you know, I got fired, <clears throat> a bunch of other people got fired or laid off, whatever. Pretty much like most of the staff got laid off. 
um, all the, pretty much all the remote staff got laid off uh, and all the local staff ended up staying. And uh, that's how I got back into streaming. And so here we are. So so when I, after we left, uh, something weird happened and Zam ended up rebranding into a site called Fanbyte. And I don't know exactly how that went down. There was somebody, somebody had the brand and they merged the brands or whatever. But, but what ended up happening was there was just like a huge purge of basically anything Zam related, like are the Zam official. If you go to, for example, if you go to youtube.com, we can pull it up right now. Zam official. Uh, let me see if it's still up. They changed the name. Yeah. If you go to Zam official, it pulls up fan bite. We had tons of videos on here, tons and tons of videos on here, which I don't know if they actually even exist anymore. I they pretty took them all down. Yeah. So as of three years, they took them all down. So they did a huge purge. Um, they rebranded this, the uh, you know, fan bite is still, it's still announced as fan bite on demand. Uh, but Zam official still leads here. Um, they ended up purging all the content that we made. They ended up purging, um, uh, some of the sites, a lot of the sites, basically all the sites, except for Wowhead were pretty much killed, which is crazy to me because those sites, I mean, some of those sites were actually getting traffic. So for them just to wipe, it must've meant that they just didn't want to have to deal with it because, you know, it's a bunch of tools that, that we were building over the course of like, you know, 12 years that we just kind of like pieced together and it's kind of, you know, so maybe they decided they just didn't want to do anything with it. Um, this is actually hilarious because the company I work for near reach was talking to Fanbyte about sponsored news bits like three weeks ago and they went poof. Yep. So, <clears throat> so, you know, as somebody who's a former Zam uh, person. I was kind of like, wow, man, you guys just like trashed everything, which means you pretty much ditched all that demographic, which I mean, let's not, let's not kid ourselves. There was a pretty significant uh, demographic that really didn't want to go anywhere else. They were stubborn. They would have stayed there forever, forever. <laughs> like the EverQuest people, they would have stayed there for fucking ever. Talk about how Alakazam was the best. <laughs> so, uh, so what happened was, uh, uh, you know, Fanbyte was basically just cruising for a while, for years, and then uh, this week they got hit with the ten cent again, um, and so uh, we started to see some layoffs happening here uh, yesterday. And I still follow a lot of people in in you know in the Zam you know, realm or whatever they're calling it now. Uh, Alakazam, my favorite Pokemon. <laughs> uh, but the, uh, what's, what I find funny <laughs> is that, uh, they did all these layoffs and they did them. They did a lot of them actually. Uh, and they didn't, I guess they didn't think to like grab the socials first. Um, and so they actually don't have control over unless it's changed in the past few minutes. Nope. Uh, they don't have control over their, um, their social media. So they don't have like, for example, their fan by page. It says, forgot the keys. Tencent made $35 billion in net income last year and laid off almost every member of child company fan by please support the staff elsewhere. Um, and so, <laughs> uh, and there was even a tweet that they, that was deleted. That was like, you forgot the keys motherfucker or something like that from the official Twitter account. Um, <clears throat> and let me just say, let me just say that I'm not surprised that this happened again. You know, kind of feel like I told you so. Um, Tencent never gave a shit about Zam. Whatever this rebrand was, where you ditched basically everything that we put that we put together beforehand in order to do a relaunch uh, or a rebrand or whatever to make this new company uh, or this new brand, it didn't work, and it wouldn't work because there's already so many competing big brands out there that it's not you know gaming news is just not a place that has a lot of growth. I have experienced this now twice in <laughs> in this industry, and so. To see people like really getting upset about how this has all gone down, it's like, you know, for example, like this, Tencent made $35 billion. Yes, but how much did you guys make? How much did Fanbyte make? I know these people worked hard. I know they did, but you cannot be surprised when your site that does not get a ton of traffic, and Fanbyte does not get a ton of traffic, <laughs> uh, it, it, it's, it's not making money. It's not making money, so people get laid off. This is what, what's gonna happen. I feel like this is something that should have like, should have, like should, somebody should have thought us ahead of time. Uh, <clears throat> uh, only code pages do. So yeah, like the fan by folks did everything right, jumped through every asinine hoop Zam forced on them. I don't understand this line at all because I feel like who the fuck is Zam? We were all fired. Like who the fuck are you talking about? You know? I mean, I feel for this person, and everybody else who's laid off here, right? And I know people are mad and they're lashing out and they're gonna blame anybody they can. But I'm just here to say, you know, if you retweet like this, who the fuck is Zam? Huh? Our director of content gone. 
president gone cf ceo see all that shit gone who who is zam <laughs> which zam of which do you speak this is the first time you've heard a fan bite up until now you know i even i even tried on here to like keep uh to to use some fan bite news articles from time to time because you know i want to support these guys because some of them you know some like two of them i know of um because they were there when i left one of them is actually in charge now <laughs> uh, uh, but this is a, this is a pretty good list here it's actually in their their facebook's or their instagram story it shows here that Everything with a red line, you guys probably put it together. These people are no longer there. So like Dylan Skiffington. Dylan Skiffington was there when I left. He was uh, like a guide writer or something like that. Um, <clears throat> so he's still there. The artist formerly known as Zam. Yeah, for real. For real. And, you know, I mean, I take a little bit of offense to it because, you know, we did everything we could to make that brand work. You know, so I don't know, like, I don't know who, what, what Zam, what this Zam person did, but, uh, uh, but you know, right here, so it's a one, two, three, four, I mean, there's like four, five, and a bunch of engineers. Uh, let me see, Ivan Espinosa, Keith Talbert, Patrick Reardon, okay, and then I see, and then Alexis Cousy, that's uh, Perculia, she runs Wowhead. I, don't, I wonder why she's on the content consultant team for, uh, for Fanbyte, because she, she, I mean, maybe things have changed, but she never really had an interest in anything uh, non World of Warcraft related. So, um, <clears throat> but she's on the list, but she didn't get fired. Uh, Wildhead, I've already talked to some folks that I know still over at Wildhead, and um, they've confirmed to me that uh, that that Wildhead has not been touched, uh, which is basically what happened before with Sam, because Wildhead is the site that continues to make money. Well, it's the site that that's attached to a site that or attached to a game that continues to thrive somehow. Um, and the site is also pretty good. Like, wow, it's a pretty good site overall. Great resource. Lol King was also a really good resource and they just trashed it. So I don't know what the deal with that is. I feel like Lol King could have been spun out into like a, a huge League of Legends brand site because League of Legends have done have have done so many different things with their brand since then. But, you know, um, the site that makes ad money. Yeah. And so, yeah, this ended up being a, um, uh, it's the resource for a while. Exactly. It's the resource for a while. So this is a huge purge. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen at the site now, you know, I mean, as of now, it's basically, you know, um, I mean, there's still articles going up. If you go to gaming news, news, I think some articles are posted today, as a matter of fact. Oh, nope, never mind. Nope. No articles today. Uh, <laughs> as a matter of fact, let me see. Michael Hyam. Let me see. Is Michael Hyam on here? Nope. No, 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 Mike Williams. No, 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 no. Okay, so I didn't, I don't see his name on here. Oh, right at the top, here it is. So he's a Final Fantasy fourteen editor. So he is still there. Okay, so there's still a couple writers that are actively posting things that are still there. Kenneth Shepard. Um, they really killed Lol King and shot it uh, when they shouldn't have. They were stomping on Mobile Fire when it was uh, rising at the time. The biggest issue that we had with Lol King was that um, uh, uh, um. Oh, fuck. What was the name of the GG site? Something.gg. That site, uh, I can't remember what the name of it, uh, but that site was really giving us a run at the time. Um, but I don't, I don't even know. I can't even remember the name of the site anymore, so I don't know if I've seen it around or anything, or if even there exists to be a site like Lol King nowadays. Um, Mobile Fire probably still exists, I'm guessing, but... Um, but who cares? I mean, you, 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 they they ended up purging everything, and so it was everything, all that stuff was trash. Uh, what I've what I've read from other other members from their other ex you know, members that are still part of the crew, I guess, or that have uh, uh, insight into who is still there, uh, was that they're going to be switching to um, to a guide based, user generated content based um, system, which is kind of what we wanted to do a long time ago, but it's cool. <laughs> we've always been really big i say we as an old zam right like our biggest thing was we wanted to make um uh, to to get guide writers and people writing guides using these really robust and fantastic tools that our engineers have built uh to make these guides look really good like the lol king guides were like unmatched unmatched they were so good um, because of the tools that we put in, so that way you could see the builds, you could see all this stuff, and everything was laid out in a way that was easy to reference. Um, and uh, and yeah, Wowhead, Wowhead, and Wow, you guys know Wowhead because Wowhead's got a million tools on that you guys have used. Like we've always been ahead uh, of the game on tools, and we ended up building what we wanted to do was build a system that would just allow anybody to be able to use, you know, these tools to make. Uh, make guides and such and so you know one of the uh, one of the people who used to work here said that they you know they tried their best to um, prevent uh, the the fan brand into going in that direction of making uh, guides and they wanted to make 
um, you know, uh, do writing and articles and stuff like that from, you know, oh God, I can't, I don't even want to quote what they said because it was, it was like a diversity thing. It was like, they wanted to, to bring views that are not represented elsewhere in games. Um, and you know, as I read through some of these things, nothing necessarily stands out as being unique to here versus other sites. Um, and also if we want, you know, there's plenty of other sites that also champion diversity as well. So you know, I don't know if they necessarily bring anything new to the table that way. Bottom line is, it's really fucking hard to do a rebrand and to bring everything back up to where it was before. And they tried and they tried. I mean, they tried, but they failed. So, uh, you know, they failed because they weren't making enough money to uh, stay off of uh, off of um, uh, Tencent's radar. Uh, Tencent's going through some shit right now where their their valuation, or not valuation, but their value or their mother, whatever, is like dropped from like a trillion dollars to like 200 million dollars, something like that. Sorry, that's that's I'm totally making those numbers up. But <laughs> I'm not surprised if they go around and start cutting uh, uh, cutting businesses that are making cash. They did it to us. Now they're doing it again. Um, what had got scrapped a lot? Did it? <clears throat> what happened with ten cent? Oh man. Uh, so <laughs> so yeah, it's currently under it's currently under management from um uh, from uh, Dylan Skiffington to who uh, uh, I, I don't know what his official position is there anymore, but. Uh, he says that he's a, he is heading up uh, fan.com fanbyte.com for now so we'll see you know if uh what he ends up doing with this or what or if he ends up staying in position or if, even if he ends up like keeping his job um but uh you know he is uh, he's a senior games guides manager so if they're gonna be going the guides route then it's probably the perfect person to keep on board but uh but yeah so dead site again can't say that it's a surprise because I mean it's it's it already happened once because i'm here <laughs> i'm here doing this um so yeah uh follow up with last week uh with patreon patreon did have uh uh they did lay off a bunch of security folks they've actually confirmed they laid off 20 percent of their staff so we talked about it last week they um uh, you know, they danced around it saying that, you know, we take our security seriously and all this stuff. And it was a huge deal. We covered it on news, uh, but they have now uh, confirmed that they've laid off 27, 20% of their staff, which is like a, a good, a good sizable chunk here. Um, not just percentage wise, but I mean, 80 of its 470 staffers. Yeah. So 80 out of that's 80 people. That's a lot. So yeah, they're going through some shit right now. I don't know what they plan on doing. I don't know if this, I don't think this necessarily means it's the end or anything like that. I still don't understand how a site that takes a cut from every transaction that exists on the site does not do any of their own video hosting or streaming cannot turn a profit these days i have to under i have to really really look at jack conti who's the uh ceo and president and i have to wonder what the fuck are they doing with this money like every goddamn transaction that takes place on patreon has some kind of cut that's going to somebody and they make fucking thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and hundreds and millions of fucking dollars every month from these people right from people like me People like whoever you know that's on Patreon. And somehow, despite not despite not hosting video themselves, not hosting streaming themselves, they're basically just posting or just hosting text and images. How the fuck? Yeah, where is this money going? So it is often that these tech startups overhire, you know, like overhired planning and create new features and never did anything. Yeah. We'll have to we'll have to follow up with this, but I mean at least now we know for sure that yeah they did lay a bunch of people off. Uh, it is a slimming. Yeah, he's not too forthcoming. He says over the last nine months we've seen the tech industry and the whole economy change considerably. Many of you have asked me about layoffs and all hands meetings, and and uh, as we've set out to tighten our focus, and I said that the layoffs would be a last resort. Today we are taking that step, and I am deeply sorry to the kind talented. Da, 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 da. So yeah, he's not particularly being forthcoming about anything other than saying we've seen the tech industry change. <laughs> the evolving landscape of our current industry <laughs> buzzword generator um hookers and plow they're not paying a fee to anyone right like how businesses pay a fee to visa well they do they do pay a fee oh yeah they, they have merchant fees just like anybody else like, like credit card processor fees they have fees they have to cover as well um uh, only fans and similar sites also put a dent in some of their income. Yeah, that's true. I mean, yeah, I could see that. And maybe they're overstaffed. Like, I, I could see that. Like, this, they could be overstaffed. Only fans beat them before they can launch porn tree on. <laughs> well, you know, they, they, they actually steered away from doing adult content. Like, they heavily steered away from doing adult content because they're trying to be a more, um, uh, a more accessible uh, 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 crowdsourcing or crowdfunding platform. 
But then what ended up happening was OnlyFans ended up blowing up anyway. Beyonce fucking singing about it, right? Fucking famous celebrities having having OnlyFans because it was hip because they were being the rebels. They were like, fuck it, you know. And Patreon's always been the art more artsy, just kind of like you know, like the beatnik side of things. You know, it's like, oh, it's cool, man. I'll support your book on Patreon. You know, <laughs> you can still get nudes there, or whatever. But they heavily clamp down at some of the uh, uh, on some of the um, uh, things that you could post on there. Porn makes the world go round. Yep, uh, this could very well be preemptive over the uh, over the recess recession. Patreon subs would be the first kinds of things people cut when tightening belts. Yes, and that's true. Like I have seen this on 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 my uh, crowdsourcing sites that I have seen or crowdfunding sites. I have seen that uh, there have been some uh, tightening uh, tightening of the belts. Even here, even here on Twitch, uh, here on Twitch, uh, on OnlyFans, on Patreon, like absolutely across the board, like people are tightening it up a little bit. And I get it, man. Like fucking everything's expensive. Everything's fucking expensive, and nobody's making any extra money. So I get it. Um, but it's but it's still it's like for me it's like it's like damn man like you guys don't you guys aren't really hosting shit man like come on manage your money better but it's possible yes thank you they could they could have been overhired they could have overhired and they're just scaling back but um <clears throat> see my company was purchased by a hedge fund when the company was purchased there uh, were supervisors that reported to one manager that reported to c team supervisors report to multiple managers that report to directors that report to the C team four levels overhead for no reason than bet than because we can. Yeah. That's like that's like your standard corporate America middle manager bullshit. It happens. Happens everywhere. Um, I don't know the industry, but once something's established, uh, can't you just streamline staff and make people do double jobs, extended hours, etc.? Uh, then you cut twenty percent of staff and keep the profits. I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know. Um I mean I I don't know how they would have done this you know, any better or whatever. This seems to be what they're doing in order to achieve that. Like they're looking at it and they're saying, okay, we need to streamline our process here. Um, and that's probably what they're looking at here. So not necessarily working everybody over hours or anything, but they're laying people off so that way they can, uh, um, you know, do this. Uh, job creep, everyone's favorite thing. Yeah, exactly. Now all the people are gone. Guess who's got to do the work? Oh, yeah. That's, that's absolutely, I mean, 80 people out of 470 were cut. So, uh yeah <laughs> that's gonna be a sizable chunk of people um i cannot feed myself but i have to get tased from x person yeah you know i fall i fall victim to that too man sometimes i'm just like maybe this time those are actual nudes and she's not just being facetious with this description and then you buy it and you realize it's not and you're like fuck <laughs> i cut out a lot of these subs i never checked on anyways yeah, I mean, I, mean, I do the same thing on Twitch, you know, like I'll, su I'll sub to some folks and then, you know, I'll, I'll just rotate them bitches around. And if I don't check on somebody in a while, then it expires. And see, I do other people's jobs when we have a whole department who is supposed to do it. Yep. 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 So, so yeah, so Patreon kind of in a weird place right now. 20% of staff gone. Um, well, I, we'll see if that ends up amounting to anything. Uh, again, like I hope that they could get this thing streamlined because it is a good platform. It does offer a good service. And, you know, even if this service ends up falling out of fashion, which it very inevitably will, all of these crowdsourcing, crowdfunding things will eventually fall out of fashion the same way that they fell into fashion. Um, then, uh, you know, hopefully they could weather that as well. Uh, that is one good thing about being a fatty like me. Even the promise of titties does not stop my hunger. <laughs> How much money? How much money are you saving that way, though, man? You know, you could just you could just watch one titty video and then maybe, you know, skip a meal. You know, you could save some money. Nah, no, man. The videos are like 25 bucks now. It's fucking crazy. 25 bucks, man. Get out of here. Psh, psh, porno video. Boy, I'll go X videos. Um, <laughs> Move on. So we had a, uh, we had a, uh, this is like a one-off interesting thing that happened. Uh, we, we typically cover whenever streamers get, um, get banned. If there's, if they're banned for like wrongful purposes or whatever, like for example, E-Rob, uh, there is a streamer named E-Rob who, uh, who said that he was going to beat up a, beat up a viewer at uh, TwitchCon, and, um, and he was banned for 30 days and you know, <laughs> <laughs> one of the best comments I've seen on that. He made, I guess I don't know. I don't know the con. I didn't. See, I saw one of the one of the videos where he said it, and it was so jokingly. I was like, there has to be another video somewhere. I can't play it right now because he's banned. Uh, but uh, but one of the best comments I've seen from that is, you know, these thirty days for threatening to beat up somebody at TwitchCon. 
when he probably could have just fucked them and got seven days. This is the one banned for a person itself. It's just hilarious. Let's talk about E-Rob, dog. Uh, what honor let E-Rob beat you up? Yeah, man. Dude, I can't show you the I can't show you the picture of the video or anything. You have to trust me, bro. Okay, source, trust me, bro. Uh, but there was somebody else who was banned, and this was uh, Zeppla. Zeppla was banned for impersonation, impersonating herself. It was only a one hour ban, but still it was enough to get some feathers ruffled. I would be ruffled too. <laughs> My account just fucking disappeared. Uh, but she says, what the fuck, Twitch? Why did I get banned while I wasn't even streaming since last week? And it deleted almost all my followers. I had 240K, now I have 78.5K. This is devastating. I need answers. So she's already streamed again, or she's already, yeah, she's streamed, no, it's not streamed, but she's already said that uh, uh, recently that some of her, her uh, sorry, her, uh, uh, follower account has gone back up and it, so it seems like somebody's going through and like trying to like you know uh, or maybe the process takes a while to like reinstate those things or whatever um you were spoiling news cunts <laughs> twitch staff playing favorites up the new here uh anyways yeah i mean this pretty much ended up being nothing here but still it's pretty fucking funny and she says impersonation i've been fucking fighting scammers on this platform impersonating me and fishing people for years and you literally banned me <laughs> impersonation via username or display name i didn't know they actually ever took they ever took action on this shit i feel like i see people impersonating other people all the time um well maybe just through name not necessarily through actions or anything like that but still uh, I know she didn't want to come back to the U.S., but glad she is out of where she's she was at. So that girl that had sex on Twitch, I was not turned on. What? <laughs> that was last week's news. <laughs> uh, she got like 127k followers in the first hour of her stream. There you go. Yeah, it must have just popped back in. That wasn't that wasn't. Uh, yeah, that that certainly wasn't organic. It was somebody fixing it. Um, someone on Twitch probably uh, dates a girl who hates Zeppelin, or or. Someone on Twitch probably has relations, online relations, with somebody named Zeppola who claims to be her. And then they're mad. So they're like, no. <laughs> Zeppola's like the last person who needs more shit thrown at them. She fled Ukraine. Oh, I didn't know that. Jesus. No wonder she was so fucking hype over this. She's like, I can't fucking take this right now. God damn. Yeah. Tam, thanks Gaster for add, adding a little more context there. Uh, I mean, there was also that one girl who got a ban of their sixth or seventh and like unbanned, not even a day later. Yeah, I saw that. Like, people just getting bans, it's like, it's no big deal. If I ever get like a ban, I'll be like devastated. I'll be like, what the fuck did I do, man? What the fuck did I do? And then I'll just stream on like, you know, YouTube or something. Uh, or someone at the country, uh, the country in the last few weeks, months. Oh, she bounced, oh, she bounced from country to country for the last few months. Yeah. Uh, good lord, someone is, uh, Twitch office is a massive piece of shit. Well, you know, I don't know how this could have happened. Like, it could be somebody maybe did not... I don't fucking know! Who the fuck knows? Who the fuck knows? We can, we can, we can, like, speculate all we want. Uh, we can pull up you old... Boom. I'm there now. Not that one, we could pull up... When we're applying the community this. guidelines, we very specifically take context and intent into account. I mean, they don't. <laughs> they fucking don't. The context here is that it is the person that you're banning for impersonating themselves. So they don't. Could be false reports as well. Kind of be weird. False reporting somebody for impersonating themselves. What a weird fucking way to go. One of the most easily verified things, but yeah, you're right. It could have been banned and then. <laughs> Twitch really is a shit show. I mean, this is a minor thing. This is what you guys know. We have lots to be mad at Twitch about. I'm not going to say this is one of them. This is a super minor thing. I'm not even worried about it. Not even worried about it. Y'all shouldn't worry about it either. Unless it happens to me. And then, then we burn this motherfucker down. No, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. Don't do that. I don't want the E-Rob treatment. Okay. That looks like a Spencer bought bottle of beer. It is indeed a Spencer bought bottle of beer, and he left it here. But it's okay. I got him high, so you know. Um, don't ever impersonate yourself. I don't even know how. How would I impersonate myself? I I think about that sometimes. Like, how would somebody mock me? Like, and also, do I want to know? Like, I don't. I don't want to know what like a caricature of myself is, because then I'll be like super, like <laughs> self conscious about those things. <laughs> <laughs> so the creator AK Mike C. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mike B is a famous YouTube rat. No, that's other Mike B. Dang, you want to list? No, no. <laughs> I don't want to know what I do. <laughs> Mike's hair is a bit off today. You noticed? 
I'm just glad I have enough hair that it stays up. <laughs> stays straight. Uh, <laughs> Twitch is shady. Just like a lot of companies, they're thankful. No, they're thankful that there are other things drawing the attention of law enforcement right now, other than some scams that are going on right now. That's just crypto. Yeah. First we get hair, then we get a chin hog. That's right. Mike B is a famous asshole drummer. Fucking fuck. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> that's like, that's some shit that you'd pull up on like a, an interview to make somebody go like, the fuck, how'd you know about that? <laughs> anyway, so small Twitch news, small Twitch and proverbial pretty good news all right all right as i so this is from zach bussy says super cheers are getting a second test this time they have a name for them instead of instead cheer coins cheer coins allow you to cheer whole amounts of one dollar five dollar ten dollar or a hundred dollars uh and so basically it's just a way just to quickly go and send a cheer um but maybe this will be easier uh, for you to do so this is something that could be coming down since your community supports you in so many ways subs gifts subs donations bespoke balloon art what uh the more you love your community shows but during this test, we'll temporarily add a cheer coin to chat. After a viewer clicks on cheer coin, they will choose a monetary amount, and then boom, lucky non subscribers will receive a sub emote that they can use for the rest of the stream. Uh, so yeah, this, I mean, it sounds sounds interesting, right? Kind of add a little bit more interactivity to the streams and all that stuff. I mean, Twitch is Twitch is looking at places like TikTok and and uh, even YouTube and Streamlabs and Stream Elements and all that stuff as like competitors. Like, what are people using on these sites? What are they? What do they uh what do they lean towards? A lot of them lean towards having a million fucking emojis all over the goddamn screen. It's nothing but emojis fucking up your compression artifact, just fucking it all up. <laughs> but that's what people want, so. Super cheers with TTS for extra troll levels? That's right, yeah. It's everything. Maybe Twitch can just try to be better instead of adding gimmicks. Well, I mean, you know, this is uh this is probably just not the same department that's fucking everything else up. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh let's see oh yeah here we go the split is oh this is older older news but this may still be uh the same the split is 80 percent to the creator testing only the u.s so this is an older update so that might change but you get to the match your coin it's kind of nice yeah it is kind of nice it is kind of nice uh but like i said that part could change we don't know but still that's pretty good um gimmicks equal better that's right yeah yeah um lastly it feels like a super short news, but goddamn, how we somehow hit an hour. I don't know how the fuck that happened. I did not have hours with the news. You guys must let me embellish some shit, and that's your fault. That's your fault. <sighs> with stupid articles like this one I'm about to announce. So, in the UK, there is one thing. There is one type of media that's actually selling better than PlayStation games. And that is vinyl. <laughs> So, uh, in the UK, that's right, vinyl outsells PlayStation physical medium. So I understand, I know, I know, I know it's a technicality, small technicality or whatever, but while this may be, this is a slow week. <laughs> I put it out, I was like, we're not gonna talk about that. Hey, but you know what? Fuck it, it's PlayStation, man. Fuck those guys. So <laughs> oh, my exclusivity. <laughs> CEO, <laughs> that Call of Duty, that Call of Duty contract was not good enough. We deny whatever. Fucking last, that's last week's news, anyways. Vinyl's easier to get a hold of, like, ac <laughs> like actual. I don't. I mean, it just says all it says is that vinyl sales have reached a thirty-year high as wax also overtakes CDs and DVDs. Vinyl is already kind of taken off again, again. Um, so not surprising to see that it's starting to overtake other forms, other media forms, uh, or. Uh, media mediums um <laughs> but it's still i mean it's still like you know we're not really buying dvds anymore we're not really buying cds we're not buying physical playstation games um as often as we used to so fine <laughs> okay why do i saw vinyl records being sold in walmart yeah it's i mean it's apparently it's becoming a thing again uh, I mean, I, I have a I have a stack of vinyl too. I, I I didn't even plan on it. I wasn't starting a collection or anything. I just started buying them, and now all of a sudden I have like you know fifteen different uh, records. Uh, and then I'm I'm surfing through like other. I have like a couple bins and stuff left over from uh, from my mother in law. Um, and you know I'm going through her records and shit, and like looking for stuff to sample. You know, Doom soundtrack vinyl. Oh, that's my favorite. Just knocks the needle right out the line, man. <laughs> 
Not too long they were saying that physical book sales were on the rise, oddly enough, due to millennials. Yeah, I mean, also the accessibility for physical books um, has increased. Like, it's so much easier to get um, to get books from, like, Amazon. I mean, Amazon has improved uh, accessibility for a lot of things by also uh, killing off the brick-and-mortar place that used to sell those things. Um who would send you vinyl? Oh, yeah. I wonder who. I wonder who. I do have a couple of Tanneros pieces in there, too. Books are better than e-readers. Yeah. That's <laughs> Sal can't print all the books. Books don't need batteries. That's right. Got to get a vinyl release for your arsenal. I don't know. Man, Vinash is expensive as fuck. Are you kidding me? That's so expensive. You got it from the Bioshock Collectors uh, ED. Oh, nice. Companies can't take away my physical copies from their digital services. Yeah, I'm definitely a big physical copy guy for sure. I mean, like obviously PC and all that stuff. I don't really do that, but um, but for the most part, with uh, like my Switch and um, uh, even like with music, but not you know, I don't. I, I occasionally will buy a CD if I'm in like an old CD store. I'll go buy a CD for like an album that I never listened to or something that I maybe missed out on that's not available anywhere. Like a good example of that would be Blade Two. Blade 2 soundtrack, I don't know about now, but you can't find it anywhere. Uh, at least not whole. Um, and so, you know, I, I I know that was a good soundtrack. So I picked it up. And yes, it's a great soundtrack. And it's just, uh, but you can't get it anywhere. So sometimes, you know, you have to go. Sometimes you have to go these routes in order to get some music uh, that you really want to hear. Uh, Blade 2 soundtrack is banging. It's so good. That Massive Attack song is like one of my favorites. Easily one of my favorites. God, so good. Um, but so it's also dumb that ebooks are like more expensive than paperbacks now. Is that true? I always see ebooks available on uh, e readers, uh, uh, ebooks available on Amazon for cheaper than the actual book, but, um, but, 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 that's it. We're done with news. Thank you so much, chat, for helping today. I drove two hours to buy a physical copy of Tesseract Polaris. Ooh. That's a good one, actually. I haven't listened to that in a long time. Shit, I used to listen to a lot of Tesseract. That's rad. Nice. That's also, that's an album that you kind of have to listen to, like, all the way through. Everything kind of flows, if I recall. It's been a while since I listened to it, but yeah. That's a good one, man. Nice. Uh, Buy MySpace! What, no Randy news? No Soldier news? No, there's none of that. What, is there anything? No. No, 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 no. No. We're done. Same with Alter State. Yes, another. Another good one. God, I'm gonna have to listen to that again. Oh, I'm gonna pull up my pull up my shit. I can't play it on stream because Twitch got mad the other day because we played Attack Attack Sticky Stickly, and they were like, "No, you can't do that." And I was like, "Really? These guys? The fuck?" Let's see, Tesseract. I'm just gonna add it to my list. Tesseract. Boop. Okay. Don't touch anything else. We can't play no sounds on here for you guys. All right, that's it. What about Mike news? I have news. I don't have any news. Do I have news? Oh, my birthday's coming up. What are you talking about last week? Birthday's next week. That's it. Thank you so much, Chef, for hanging out. Say goodbye to MySpace. Um, <laughs> some of the best pop prog uh, put out in the last decade, to be honest. I agree. That is pretty good. Thank you so much for watching. Chat, hang out for a minute. I'm going to see you guys in a second. There, there, we better? There, fixed. There. Whoop. I just forgot to do the I forgot to do the hat swirl. That's how I get my hair. That's how I get my hairstyle. There we go. Pam, look at that. 